You're tuned in to Dynamics Talk, hosted by the one and only Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So everybody probably knows by now that Microsoft announced 2025 Wave 2 of the release notes a couple of weeks ago. And I've actually done a couple of videos already. I talked about what's coming for Dynamics 365 sales. And I also talked about what's coming for Dynamics 365 customer service. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what's coming to Dynamics 365 contact center. Now there might be some features that will look familiar to you because some of these have been announced previously. Uh, but this time you're gonna hear about them because they're reaching GA uh, in the next couple of months. So let's just go ahead and dive right in into the new features. The first one I wanna talk to you guys about is the enhanced real-time translation. So today you can enable translation already in the application, but the thing that you have to do is you need to add a custom web resource and in that web resource you need to actually configure language translation services so the difference here is that this is going to be an out-of-the-box solution for those translation services so it's going to be an easier and a faster setup set up for administrators if they want to enable this feature so i'm super excited about this one now, there's gonna be some configuration options here for this feature as well. So custom and default primary language settings are gonna be in the different experience profiles that you can configure, right? We can do that today, configure those experience profiles. So there's gonna be some settings in there that we can take a look at. <clears throat> and then we can also configure languages on a per channel level. So each channel can, ever, can actually have different language settings enabled on that. The other thing that we're gonna be able to do is to show or hide the original and the translated uh, messages for those individual messages. And we can also manually change the language for sending or receiving messages as well. And then of course, we could already do this, right? Being able to turn those translations off or on for each individual conversation. So I'm super excited about this one. Now, I'm sure you've heard about this feature, right? The customer intent agent. I've already created a video on that as well, kind of explaining what it is, how it works, and how you can set this up. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but basically the customer intent agent is really designed to understand why a customer is reaching out to support, right? Really recognizing that intent. So the way that works is that in the system, uh, the agent will manage intent groups and then also intents under those specific intent groups. Now, the, this feature actually has everything to do with the intent agent because it uses those intent groups and the intents that I just mentioned that are part of the agent to actually route uh, a conversation and I believe also a case maybe to the correct person. Now, the intents can actually be mapped to user groups. And then in those user groups, you can have several customer service reps, right? So this is gonna make it a lot simpler because the cases and the conversations will be routed to the appropriate resource without a need for setting up those traditional routing rules, right? Everything will actually be going now through intent if that's something that you wanted to do. You could also have certain uh, certain conversations or certain cases use the intent routing and then others using a different type of routing. So you have some flexibility with that as well. This one is uh, a feature that was previously announced in February. And the way that this works is that, think about previously, how would we connect or how would we collect customer feedback? We did that by sending out a survey, right, to a customer that could be like after a case was created or whatever that trigger might be. So the difference here is that we can now actually use autonomous agents for this, right? This is a feedback agent, so to speak, that will now go ahead and collect that customer feedback. So the way that works is that admins can actually create surveys in the Copilot service admin center, right? And as soon as you do that, an agent is automatically provisioned. 
then if you wanted to do some additional configuration, you can do that in Copilot Studio. So we really see that all of those applications are working together for us to manage them as well. Now, this one is very interesting. This has actually been announced in June, and this is today in preview. Now, proactive engagement really means reaching out to your customers or right, to notify them or to remind them of something. So this way, they don't have to contact the customer service department. We actually contact them first. Now, these could be great in scenarios about maybe uh, flight cancellations, right? Your flight is canceled. You probably would welcome a call that says like, hey, your flight is going to be a couple of hours late, maybe a couple of days late. We can also use this for payment reminders and also for service outages as well, right? Think about, for example, your power company. If there is an outage in your area, wouldn't it be great to get a phone call? And why am I saying phone call? Yes, this is currently for the voice channel only. Now, this could actually, if you have customer insights or if you want to use customer insights, you can actually do that. This works with customer insights if you want to kind of stay inside of that Dynamics 365 family. But if you already have other tools in place, you can also use the API. It's the CCAAS API that you can utilize for that as well. So once that trigger is configured, right, either uh, using uh, the, what I said earlier, right, the customer insights journey, then contact center really handles all of that orchestration of it, such as uh, what is the best time to call, it will figure that out. And it will also manage the pace of when those calls are happening so that your customer service reps are not gonna be overwhelmed. Now, calls can actually be made either by AI agents or by customer service reps or a mixture of both. Now, there's gonna be three different dialing modes that Microsoft announced. The first one is the co-pilot dialing mode, and this is where we're just using one of those autonomous agents, right? The system dials, and then when the customer picks up, it then connects it to the AI agents, and then that AI agent runs through whatever that process might be. We also have a progressive dial mode. This is really when the system connects the AI agents first, the AI agent might have some questions like, hey, am I speaking to the right person? And do you have some time right now to right, have a conversation? And when those questions are asked, then it brings in a customer service rep to talk to your customer. And then lastly, we also have the preview dialing mode as well, where the system dials, right? And then connects that to a customer service rep. Now, before that, that dial is actually happening, it will actually give the customer service rep all of the information related to that customer, also the reason for the call, obviously, before dialing. Now, I think this is a great way to service our customers in an even better way. And I'm even thinking this could be something that could be useful for sales as well, right? Maybe cross-sell opportunities, uh, following up with leads, customers, etc. So I think this is going to be a very, very nice feature uh, for us to, uh, to use. Now, this one is a little bit vague. There's not a lot of information about this one in the release notes, but basically what it comes down to is that administrators can create rich media templates for things like WhatsApp and live chat channels. Now, there's gonna be obviously different options based on the different channels. For example, the live chat templates, those are messages that could have a series of questions. So what I'm guessing is you can pick the template during a conversation, maybe before a conversation. We'll have to wait and, and see on how that exactly is going to work. And then this one is going to be an enhancement of the automatic data masking rules that we have today. This is something that your customer service reps can actually opt into, and it allows for the redacting of individual customer messages to prevent that sensitive data being stored right in that conversation in our database. So I think this is gonna be a very nice one uh, as well. And then this one is super exciting. This is really a new area that supervisors can take advantage of by looking at insights related to conversations, cases, and the performance of the autonomous agents, right? The knowledge, uh, the knowledge agent, 
the case management agent and the customer insights agent as well. So it's gonna show specific KPIs for each of those autonomous agents. It also shows case volume per intent group if you have the intent agents obviously uh, uh, activated in your instance. So it's showing active results and unassigned cases for each of those intent groups. And then on the left side of the screen, you're gonna be able to see an activity feed with all of the activities that those agents are doing. And this is great because we're gonna be able to keep track of everything that's happening, all the things that those agents are doing, but we can also intervene, right? If there is a need for a human to actually intervene in any of those actions. So I'm su super excited about that one as well. Now, there are several enhancements to the customer service rep experiences. So these are really designed to just make that experience for that customer service rep a lot better and to also kind of streamline some of those processes as well. So one of them is the deep noise suppression that really right, removes that background noise. So the quality of the call is gonna be a lot better. We also gonna have the ability for customer service rep to place the other consulting rep on hold. So today, if a customer service rep wants to do a consultation, right, we're actually only have the ability to put the customer on hold while we're talking to the other rep during that consultation. We can't, we can't do anything else right now. So this is great because we're now going to be able to uh, actually place that consulting rep on hold. Sorry, previously we could only put the customer on hold. Now we can actually place the consulting rep on hold, right? So we can go back to the customer if we have additional questions to ask while that consultation with the other rep is still ongoing. And when that's happening, we also have the ability to actually block the capacity of that customer service rep when they are in that consultation, right? So just like the capacity can be blocked when somebody is on a chat or on a regular voice call. And obviously when that consultation then ends, that capacity is then released just like the functionality that we have with chat and cases and conversations as well. So that's all I have for you guys today for Dynamics 365 Context Center. Please leave a message uh, in, the, in the comments because I would love to know what is your favorite feature of all of those things that are coming to Contact Center. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you will never miss another video again. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.